It's a little bit strange, the things we remember. I know that isn't an original thought, but it's been in my head the past several weeks, since early February, which was the anniversary of my father's death. I don't usually observe that date. In fact, I couldn't tell you what the actual date is. February's always been undecipherable to me, and anyway, if I'm going to set aside a day to remember the old man's life, I'd rather celebrate the beginning of it than the end. But this year, I couldn't ignore it. Messages were flying amongst the family because this was the 15th anniversary, and nobody could believe it. It's so fresh in our minds that it seems, as they say, that it was only yesterday. Of course, that isn't the strange part, that we remember the night he died. I mean, you do, don't you? The strange thing is the one memory that is particularly vivid from that night, which surprises even me, and which I'm sure will disappoint some of you. You see, they don't let you smoke in a hospital. Yeah, I hear you saying, well, duh, but I think an argument could be made on the basis of emotional strain, and, well, I don't want to get started. The point is, you can't. You just can't. I didn't want to go outside to smoke. My brother and sister lived very far away, and there was nobody there with Mama but me. I didn't want to leave her alone, even for a few minutes. So what could I do? Nothing, obviously, except sit there and say inane things that were meant, but I'm sure failed, to be comforted. We were there for hours, and then I took her home and put her to bed. I sat up with her until she was calm enough to get some rest, though I doubt she slept. And then I went outside, and I lit up a smoke. Brothers and sisters, I remember that cigarette. I remember the way it burned my throat. My mouth was so dry. I remember watching the smoke curling off the end. You can hypnotize yourself that way, you know. I remember the thickness, the weight of the smoke in my lungs, the sense that I was an installation that had been on high alert for so long, and the smoke crept from room to room, flipping all the off switches. I relaxed. The smoke did not cancel my grief, but it was pleasant, a very familiar pleasure, and I was amazed that I could feel any pleasure at all. I thought to myself, and I believe I even said out loud, not everything is grief, and I was comforted. It really was the most satisfying cigarette I have ever smoked. And the thought came to me, man, how do non-smokers live? In times like this, where do they turn to for peace? I admit it's kind of a silly thought, but just for a moment, I was desperately worried for them. I'm not an idiot. I know the answer to that question, and I knew it then. Smoking is a crutch. Non-smokers just use a different crutch. Some folks throw themselves into their work, or into a hobby, or a cause, but everyone has a crutch. There's nothing wrong with that, and it's how we're built. Life is sometimes very heavy, and we need something to bear a bit of the weight for a while. Some folks turn to food, or sex, or drugs, or therapy, or religion. Everyone has something. And I was learning an interesting truth, that it's very hard to remember when we see someone we love suffering, that our crutch might not work for her. For example, several times over the next few weeks I heard some variation of, Oh, he's in a better place now. It's all part of God's plan, and we must trust him. That might have been comforting to Mama. I hope it was. But it did me no good. I know that many folks are angered by that sentiment. Well, if this is God's plan, then God's a prick. I sympathize, but for my part, I tried to remember that they meant well and to let it go. At most, I would say, well, thank you for the thought, but I don't believe that. And most folks, for their part, would let that go. But a few were shocked. They would gasp, oh, but how can you bear it? If we're not all in God's hands, if he's not going to make sure everything turns out right, how can you go on if you'll never see your daddy again? Well, there's no trick to it, no secret that makes everything work. You go on because you're still alive, and time never stops. You'll wake up tomorrow, and there's another day behind you, and another day ahead, and the days keep going, and so do you. But I understood. Maybe, I guess, for the first time, I knew what they meant. And I just thought, well, why don't you smoke?